grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fear. I, I talked about that here in our announcements. I told you about my fear of heights. And I thank the Lord for that small fall I had to show me how my buddies saved me as they belayed on those ropes and helped me get through that bit of fear, knowing that someone was backing me up. I still don't like going up high. I have to kind of put it in the back of my head. I pray to the Lord, keep me safe on the uh, ladder or upstairs or whatever it might be. I honestly try to avoid getting on ladders or even going up in the balcony of the church. If I have to, I have to. If I don't, thanks be to God. Whatever fear you might have in your life, it may be one of those irrational fears here of spiders or clowns or heights as well. Uh, I hope that you have time to notice when you are saved, when you have backup, when you know the Lord is with you. It's always great to be amongst you all, shaking your hand in the Lord's peace as we all walk together as his disciples in this world. And then we all leave this place as his disciples proclaiming that word. That can be a little bit fearful, proclaiming that word. And I can imagine that Amos, uh, Amos, when he has to talk to Amaziah, may have been shaking his hands a little bit in fear. Fear of what Amaziah, this idolatrous priest, may say to him. Because of all the words that God has told him to say. If you read the book of Amos, it's all full of God's punishment, discipline, wrath for the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, and all the kingdoms around Israel. All the way through, except for the last little bit, which is about Christ coming to the people to save us. It's all about condemnation to tell the nations they have done wrong. Amos hears these words and proclaims them and prophesies for the Lord to the people in the northern kingdom. And he hears that God has in store for them destruction. Twice, Amos intercedes for them and says, no, stop, let them repent. But they don't. So on the third time, the Lord gives a vision to Amos and shows him a plumb line. If you've never seen a plumb line, there it is. It basically tells you when something is straight up and down. And so builders can use this. And the Lord uses it as a symbol to show that Israel has not been doing what they have been commanded. To love God and love their neighbor. They're basically like a wall or a stud that's out of alignment. And they've been measured and found to be not usable. If you've built anything, you know that if you take a look at a stud and it's curving or twisting, you throw it right out. You don't use it to support your house or your structure. Israel is not plumb. And so must be thrown out. In another way, you might look at this as a line drawn in the sand. If you were to measure God and his people in Israel, you would find their very different. And so the Lord will not pass by them. He will not grant them his blessing. They will incur his wrath, his discipline, his punishment. They are on that side of the line and he's on this. And no more will he wait for them to repent, but rather he will act in discipline, wrath, and they will go off into exile. This is the words that Amos is telling the northern kingdom. They're not great, but they are God's word. Amaziah hears these words and goes and confronts Amos. Amos, maybe with shaking hands, looks to shake Amaziah's hand, possibly. And you know why the tradition is you shake with your right hand. Most people are right-handed, and if you are shaking with your right hand, you can't grab your sword and cut down the other person. You can't strike them dead. So I can imagine Amos is looking for that peaceful hand to Amaziah, 
to show that he's not going to kill him. And Amos must be fearful for his life. In fact, there is tradition that Amos continued to preach and Amaziah came to him with a club and beat him to death. Now that's nowhere in scripture, it is just tradition, but nonetheless it shows how fearful Amos should be. His, death, his life was on the line. Amaziah says, you can continue preaching and prophesying, go ahead, but don't do it here. Don't do it in the northern kingdom. Go back home, and you can do it down there in the southern kingdom of Judah, but not here in Israel. I don't know what Amos did after this, but he could have been fearful with shaking hands. In the same way, we deal with a world that asks of us the same thing. We know you are people of the faith of Christianity. You love that guy on a cross. He's supposed to be your savior. Go ahead. Continue to proclaim that. But don't do it here. You can do it in your home. You can do it in your church. But don't do it in any public space. They are just like Amaziah. We deal with this same approach today. It's barred from speaking about our faith. It's barred from work. It's barred from public spaces, it's barred from public schools, it's barred from political discourse. <clears throat> you can speak there, but not near me. And I know it's fearful to bring up your faith or even to act in your faith. Even praying in a restaurant can be fearful at times. But the Lord is with you. He is your Savior. He has your back. I have a fear of heights, as I mentioned to you. It gets in the way sometimes. But I also have another fear, one that really gets my hand shaking. I have an extreme fear of public speaking. Yeah. Um, was it my decision? It was the Lord's. <laughs> to him always be the glory. Um, here's a story. In ninth grade, when you had to take communication class, that's when I really found out how fearful and how terrified I was of public speaking. See, the, the thing was, you could write all your notes on a three by five card, and if you had that in hand, you could read off of it for the class. Great, I got everything I need to say up there. Well, I came back, I had it in hand, and my hands were shaking so much that even with both hands on that three by five card, I couldn't read what I had written. I was that afraid. I am still that afraid. You may have often heard me stumble with my words at times, and that's because a part of my brain is going, you're going to be okay. You aren't going to die. No one's going to kill you. The Lord is with you. He will save you. He's protecting you. That's why I pray before every sermon. And I actually pray this prayer. It's from Psalm 19. I say it a little bit differently, but I'll read it out of the ESV here. My prayer is, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And here at the altar rail, I confess my sins to the Lord, asking him for forgiveness, because I do not want my mouth to be unclean before you. I want to be holy in his sight because of his forgiveness, so that I, I am able to to do what he has asked me to do, to publicly speak his name to you. Each and every time I come before you, I have that fear. But I know, because it's happened, I've stumbled, I've fallen, but he saves me. He's got my back. And whenever I make a mistake, he corrects it and makes it better. In fact, I often tell you in the greeting line, if you say good sermon, I say to his glory. And in fact, anytime you hear a good sermon here from me, it is to him the glory. Anytime you don't hear a good sermon, blame it on me. <laughs> this story is basically to remind you that Jesus, your Savior, is with you always. Don't be fearful. The, the world wants you to be fearful of them. 
They want you to go outside these doors and zip it up and be afraid to even mention anything. It is God who is with you. Amos felt the same thing, being afraid of what might happen to him. In fact, Amaziah gets things a little twisted. He calls out to Amos and says, these are your words. As we read it here in our text, Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam king of Israel saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of, ha of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. It's not Amos' words. It's God's word to the people to repent so that you aren't destroyed. And the words you speak are not your words, but God's. Words of good and words of law reminding you that, and others that the Lord is your Savior. And the Lord says this is the way you should go and be righteous in his sight. And we have a good thing to preach, just as Amos had a good thing to preach. Repent, repent, repent. It is good, because God has made it good. Don't fear them. Don't fear them because they want you to fear them, because they seem more powerful. God has your back. And don't fear them because it, you might say the wrong things. God is the one who says the things, and he will give you the Holy Spirit to say those things. The last way I have here that you might fear is you fear that what they say is true. That you are unworthy, that you don't do everything right. How are you to say this when you are a hypocrite? To summarize it all up, they're saying, you are a sinner. And they're right. We are all sinners, but we are all sinners saved by a loving God. And he calls us to him to be forgiven to continue to proclaim that word to the nations, that he is their savior, to repent and turn back to him. So don't fear that they call you a sinner. You know it's true, but you also know the truer and bigger thing, that you are forgiven. Do not be afraid to speak in this world that does not want to hear you, who acts just like Amaziah. Don't fear. I pull some words here from our opening hymn. It says, build your kingdom here, asking the Lord, let the darkness fear. We shouldn't be fearing the world. We should fear our Lord and God, but we should also love and trust in him. And we pray also in this hymn, we seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives, for you're our joy and prize to see the captive's hearts released. It is those outside of the church that are captive to sin, death, and the devil, and it is our desire to see them released. The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church, we pray, revive this earth. Sometimes we fear because we think death is approaching us because if we were to speak out, we would be just like Amos and John the Baptist. Someone would want to kill us. But that same thing is true for our Lord who died for our sake. It is by his death that we are saved and given strength and by his death we are able to preach the good news. Some will be martyred, but most of us will die a peaceful death knowing that the Lord has taken care of us. So we shouldn't fear. Even in death, we shouldn't fear. Because the Lord has victory even over death itself. So I leave you here with a portion of 1 Peter chapter 3 reminding us of not to fear the world, but to trust in God. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, 
so that when we, you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it's better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. The world wants to know why we have hope. And it is because of Christ, and do not fear, do so. As you go out in this world, and maybe you fear what they may have to say, and your hands shake, I hope the Lord, that you're able to extend that right hand in peace, to provide for all those outside of this church who are seeking peace, love, mercy, forgiveness, all the blessings that give to us life that stream from God. And may that same peace be with you, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.